Hey everyone, welcome to another Five Minutes with Ben. I'm Ben, and we're going to look at a portion of a game that I played in 2009 at the Spice Cup when it was in Lubbock, Texas. And this is me having white, Ben Feingold, against Davarin Kulyasevich. And when this game was played, Kulyasevich um, was higher rated than I am. And today, he's still higher rated than me. Okay, we got this position out of an A6 Slav. And this was a round robin, so I prepared for the game because I knew who I was playing ahead of time and what color I would have, unlike in a Swiss where you don't know. And this position I actually had in my preparation, and I played the move C takes D5. And if this was a Cambridge Springs where white's pawn is on A2 and black's pawn is on A7, then black always plays knight takes D5. However, in my preparation for the game, I noted that black always played e takes d5. Okay, and my opponent played knight takes d5. And again, if this pawn was here and this pawn was here, this is a main line of a Cambridge Springs. And I was like, why does everybody play knight takes d5 in the Cambridge Springs and nobody plays it here? So I had to figure it out here, and I did, because you can play the move e4. And the idea is if he plays knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop d2. If the pawns are on a2 and a7, black can play queen a3 here. With my pawn on a4, black can't play queen a3, so black's position's pretty bad. And that's actually what happened, although this is theory, and black is supposed to play the move knight f6, attacking the pawn on e4. The reason is, if you play bishop d3, defending the pawn, which looks very natural, now after check, you can't play bishop d2 because your bishop's hanging. So in grandmaster games that went this way, black always played knight f6. Neither one of us was familiar with that. So he played queen takes c3. I played bishop d2. He played queen b2. I played rook b1 attacking his queen. Played queen a3. And I played the move a5. So I have great positional compensation for a pawn. His queen keeps moving around. I have this monster center. His pawns are backward here. And I got my rook on the half open file. So this position's better for white. It's not winning. It's just, you know, you prefer to have white because you have great compensation for a pawn. Now my opponent wanted to clarify the situation and get rid of my center. And he made a losing move here. He blundered. He played the move c5 which attacks my center, but unfortunately he um, alleviates the squares his queen can go to. His queen was going to go back here in case I attacked it, but he blocked his own queen and now white's winning. So um, finding the winning idea is very difficult. I've shown this to a lot of strong players and nobody finds the winning idea. So the reason people don't find it is you have to attack the queen again and force him back to b2 because there's no other square that's safe. And now you have to play a move that makes a threat, but it doesn't make an immediate threat. So obviously moves like rook b1 or bishop c1 are sort of first on the radar because they attack the queen. But I found a better move where I can trap his queen and then I can attack it later. Okay, and that move is, drum roll, bishop c4. Bishop c4 develops a piece, so it looks like a nice natural move. But that's not why I did it. I want to play rook a2. And rook a2 attacks his queen and traps his queen. And there's nothing black can do about it. You can make any move for black, and I'm going to play rook a2 winning your queen. So in this position, I was walking around waiting for my opponent to move, and Varakobian, good friend of mine, who was also playing in the tournament, he was walking around and I walk up to him and I kicked him. And he looked at me because I kicked him and I did this and he went over to my game and he looked at my game and he had this most puzzled look on his face. Like, why is the queen on B2? What, what, what? So then he had this look on his face and then he walked away shaking his head and then my opponent resigned. So I beat a higher rated player in 15 moves. When the game ended and I was out in the hallway Several people came up to me and said, why did you draw so quickly? Because, you know, I have white. And I said, I didn't draw, I won. 
They figured I had attacked his queen with my rook, rook b1, rook a1, and we had a draw by reputation because our reputations are so good. Anyway, that was a nice win for me. And that's actually the tournament where I got my final GM norm. And I got it, this was in round three. I got it after round eight. I had six out of eight and the norm was six out of nine. And I became a GM after this tournament. I'm Grandmaster Ben Feingold. Please like and subscribe and watch out for more Five Minutes with Ben. Bye.